On Wednesday, March 30th, 2022, NASA publicly announced one of the most amazing discoveries in recent years. The Hubble Space Telescope managed to observe the farthest star ever seen, a light source that emerged just one billion years after the Big Bang. Hubble Telescope observes the farthest star in the universe. If you're here watching this video, it means you are passionately curious about human spaceflight and the mysteries of the universe. We constantly strive to make videos that excite a curious person like you, so subscribe now and be sure to press the bell notification so you never miss out on the updates about the cosmos. This great discovery was achieved thanks to one of the most powerful telescopes there is and a small stroke of luck. The star discovered by Hubble was nicknamed Arundel by astronomers and according to measurements emitted its light in the first billion years of the universe. This is a significant jump compared to Hubble's previous distance record in 2018, when it detected a star with an estimated age of 4 billion years after the Big Bang. The Hubble telescope received help from the universe by looking through space to form by the mass of the huge galaxy cluster WHL 013708. This cumulus caused an effect called gravitational lensing around it. Thanks to this, it was possible to see the star Arundel, which was aligned very close to a wave in the fabric of space caused by the mass of the cluster, which increased its light enough to be detected by Hubble. For now, there's not much information about the star, only its distance and brightness are known, but it is expected that soon as it begins its operations, NASA's James Webb Telescope will follow up to know the temperature and composition of Arundel. For now, astronomers remain conservative, and the possibility that Arundel is one of the stars of the first generation of the universe is not contemplated. However, we are all very eager to know more information about this star and its environment, since that would show us the conditions that the environment of the early universe had. How far is the star discovered by Hubble? The newly detected star is so far away that its light has taken about 12.9 billion years to reach Earth and it appears to us as when the universe was only 7% of its current age with a redshift of 6.2. The smallest objects previously seen at such a great distance are star clusters embedded within the first galaxies. Never before has it been possible to observe an individual object as small as a star at such a distant distance. Astronomer Brian Welch of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, lead author of the paper describing the discovery, mentions that the discovery was made from data collected during Hubble's RELICS Reionization Lensing Cluster Survey Program, led by co-author Dan Coe at the Space Telescope Science Institute STSCL, also in Baltimore. Redshift In astronomy, redshift is the effect that occurs when a distant astronomical object, such as a star or galaxy, is far away, and its visible light spectrum shifts towards the redder light stripes. Why does this happen? The redshift is due to the expansion of the universe, because the space between the galaxies expands and they move away every second, and the light waves that travel through the universe are stretching and losing energy. Because of this, the colors of the galaxies are running towards the frequencies of weaker visible light, that is, the red ones. The farther away a galaxy or star is, its redshift will be greater because the light must travel at a greater distance, and therefore travel for much longer. The star discovered by Hubble is located at a distance of almost 13 million light years. This makes it the farthest individual object that has ever been seen. However, we did not get an image of this star because it is very bright. Normally at these distances, an entire galaxy looks like a small blob, with the light of millions of stars mixed into a single point. But if such a distant galaxy is already very difficult to see, how did we see a single star so far away from our galaxy? The reason is that the light of this star passed through a gravitational lens formed by a gigantic galactic cumulus which magnified its light more than a thousand times, and in this way we could observe it as an individual object augmented by a natural magnifying glass called gravitational lensing. But what is gravitational lensing? In astrophysics, a gravitational lens is formed when light from distant bright objects such as quasars curves around a massive object, such as a galaxy, located between the sending object and the receiver. Gravitational lensing was predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. In 1919, it was possible to test the accuracy of the prediction during a solar eclipse, 
The astronomer Arthur Eddington observed how the trajectory of light from distant stars was curved as it passed near the Sun, producing an apparent displacement of their positions. A gravitational lens can be considered as a deformation of space-time caused by the presence of massive objects, and the higher the concentration of these bodies, the greater the gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing can be used as in a huge magnifying glass that magnifies hundreds or even thousands of times the light coming from very distant objects. This is how the star Arendelle was detected. In addition, gravitational lensing can be used in the completely opposite direction. That is, from the deformation of the background sources, the mass distribution of the object that acts as a lens can be deduced. This is especially useful in the case of galaxy clusters and has the advantage that it is also able to track the dark matter of a galactus cumulus. Unfortunately, gravitational lensing is not something we can control. We don't decide where there's going to be a gravitational lens, we just find them and hope that with some luck something is right behind them so we can observe it with our powerful telescopes. Observation by chance Although it might seem like something planned, the reality is that the observation of the star Arendelle was pure chance. The main objective of the Hubble telescope was to study the cluster of galaxies WHL 013708. However, the mass of the galaxy cluster drastically deformed the fabric of space, creating a powerful natural magnifying glass that greatly distorts and amplifies the light of the objects behind it. Thanks to this fortunate alignment with the crescent galaxy cluster, the star Arendelle appears in front of the cumulus directly or very close to a wave in the fabric of space. This ripple, which is defined in optics as caustic, provides maximum magnification and brightness. This caustic causes the star Arendelle to protrude from the general glow of its home galaxy. Its brightness is magnified a thousand times, or perhaps more. The James Webb will finish the job. For now, astronomers who have studied the discovery cannot determine whether Arendelle is a binary star, although most massive stars have at least one smaller companion star. According to the first analyses, Arendelle existed so long ago that it may not have had all the same raw materials as the stars around us today. Because of this, Arendelle will be a window into an era of knowledge about the early universe. The Hubble telescope has observed everything that its lenses allow it, but it can no longer do more. With the technology it has, it is not able to analyze the star in mid or far infrared frequencies. For that, we will have to wait for the James Webb to come into operation. Astronomers expect Arendelle to be visible in the years to come. Thanks to this, we will have enough time to observe it with NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, since we need the James Webb's high sensitivity to infrared light to learn more about Arendelle, because its light stretches to longer infrared wavelengths due to the expansion of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope is expected to measure the star's brightness and temperature. These details will reduce its type and stage in the stellar life cycle. It is also expected to discover what materials the Sunrise Arc Galaxy that contains the star Arendelle possesses. If Sunrise Arc Galaxy contains heavy elements that form in later generations of stars, this would mean that Arendelle is a rare, massive, metal-poor star, one of the stars of the second or third generation of the universe. Arendelle's composition is of great interest to astronomers, as it was formed before the universe was filled with the heavy elements produced by successive generations of massive stars. If follow-up studies find that Arendelle is only composed of primordial hydrogen and helium, it would be the first evidence that the legendary Population 3 stars, which according to most accepted theories by cosmology, would be the first stars born after the Big Bang. While the probability is small, scientists admit that it is a tempting idea anyway, as it would prove one of the most important hypotheses in modern cosmology. For now, the Hubble telescope has already done its job. Now it's up to the James Webb telescope to give us the information it needs to uncover more mysteries about that star and the early universe it was in. A new era of discovery. With the discovery of the star Arendelle opens up endless possibilities. For now, it only remains to wait for the James Webb Telescope to come into operation, with which, according to the astronomers who made the discovery, it is possible that we will be able to break more distance records. Some records that the James Webb Telescope is expected to break are the oldest galaxy in the universe, the first stars in the universe, the first star clusters. 
The star Arendelle is in the Sunrise Arc Galaxy. According to the first observations, this galaxy does not belong to the first galaxies that formed in the universe. But the James Webb Telescope has yet to confirm this. We may be in the presence of one of the first galaxies in the universe and we still don't know it. If Sunrise Arc turns out to be one of the first galaxies in the known universe, we could be in the presence of one of the most important discoveries in history. It means that we are observing the universe just when it was forming, one billion years after the Big Bang. Although in years of human life, one billion years may seem like an eternity, in the universe it only represents 7% of the total age of the entire universe, which is why looking at this type of object is so important for astronomy. To look into the distance is to look at the past. The farther away we are able to observe the universe, the more to the past we look. We are able to see events that occurred billions of years ago, only with the power of science and our most advanced technology. For now, gravitational lensing is the best tool we have to observe the distant universe. If with the James Webb Telescope we can look even farther than Hubble can look, we could point the mirrors of Webb and look at those corners where Hubble has already observed before. And maybe we will find things that we had not been able to see before. We may find galaxies far away or the first star clusters that began to form shortly after the universe was born. The possibilities that open up thanks to this discovery are very great, and the discoveries that are approaching in a few years will be even more amazing than this one.